Okay, um, doing the throttle body sync, so I've just moved, turned the tank around, and um, this is my first time actually getting to the, come on, focus, getting to the ECU. Um, and uh, yeah, so thought so, that ah, I'll just jump in and video that. Um, yeah, I've got a, a different type. So I've gone for this unit, which is a Synchro King. Um, it's electronic. So yeah, we're gonna give that a go and, uh, and see what we get. Um, so this is the unit. Uh, initially I had it all connected up when I calibrated it, had the, well tried every sort of calibration thing. Um, it calibrates to atmosphere when you turn it on. Turns out you can't have the hoses connected here when you turn it on. Um, or it won't calibrate properly, which is just an absolute freaking nightmare. Um, so power it on, nothing's done. Um, and yep, so it should be calibrating. Damn, the hoses in here are a nightmare. This one here, you literally cannot, you can see one of the nipples, one of them. Uh, you can see one, God knows, it's down in here, down and through here, all right, and you can't see it here. But then the other one is behind this hose here, directly behind this hose here. So you can never see it. You can't get an angle where you can see it. Luckily, this one is just there. So just there. Oops, bottom one, this one here. Okay, but man, they're hard to get to. I had to disconnect a hell of a lot of stuff just to get to them. Um, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, you see YouTube videos where they're saying it's easy, oh, it's a 20 minute job, 15 minute job, blah, blah, blah. If I wasn't on camera, it'd be, it's like, yeah, I'm been down here an hour, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's just an absolute pain in the ass um, trying to get to them. And I have no idea how I'm going to get it caps on when I'm done. So, yeah, anyway. Okay, just finished what would be the the most painful exercise ever um, and I learnt a lot about these bikes um, all the videos you see on YouTube about how easy it is to do your own throttle body sync yeah there's a massive amount of BS in there I don't know uh, I don't know what's going on but yeah it is really really hard um, maybe it's my hands I don't think so um, but there's a lot of stuff, particularly on the Gen 3, that is just insanely fiddly. Um, so I've now become an expert in getting the tank off and the airbox out. Um, so things no one tells you. Um, one, make sure that the tubes you've got are four millimeter. Because this thing here, don't ever buy one unless you've got a lathe and the ability to make up some adapters but they come with five millimeter tubes. So I had to, with the lathe, machine up some uh, five to four adapters by some four millimeter tubes so I could actually do it. So the connectors, there's only one you can see from the outside, it's this one here. Okay, this thing, yeah, the engine's hot. So, um, now that's, you can see that sort of a long length of rubber tube. That's not how they come. Um, okay, these things, these little caps, are what normally sits on them. Now, it's easy enough to get that outside one off, but the other two are just an absolute nightmare. Yeah, and you're going to lose them down the bottom. You're going to do, uh, it's so easy to damage them. So what I think I've done on one of these, and it's really hard to see, um, they actually managed to put a hole in it and uh, and that screws up the idle so every every now and again every 200 firing of a whichever one that's on it'll go, do a, a sucking sound so it'll be a and the, the revs the uh, idle will actually dip so I knew I damaged one and that caused me to end up all the way back in and, uh, and pull them out so the 
what to do. It's like, well, I've got to replace it. Um, so let's deal with, you know, while I'm replacing it, let's deal with all the things I know are a problem. Well, one thing I know a problem is that they're too small. So they're hard to get in and grab. They're hard to pull off. Um, and they're easy to damage. So over at the lathe, I had a much longer piece of 5.8 millimeter brass rod and uh, yeah so got that turned down turned down it was quite a quite a length of rod so I managed to turn down a handful of adapters um, and then I cut off effectively uh, turned it down to about 4.4 4.5 millimeter um, oh that's another yeah the hoses are four millimeters so whatever you get make sure it's four millimeters I think I mentioned that any earlier but yeah, got to double down. Four millimeters. So uh, you need this to be a bit bigger to be a tight fit. So I machined off uh, 4.4 millimeter diameter, about a centimeter long, and I have a uh, four millimeter hose that I had to run out and get. Um, look for windshield washers, but it does the job. Um, now what I did was I cut off, and you could see it before under, but yeah, about three, four, probably should have done five centimeters, thinking back on it, um, uh, lengths of this, and just jammed the pieces in there. So, um, you know, now I've got the actual vacuum caps, um, but they're actually long enough to grab, sorry, they're long enough to grab because they're, they're a good, you know, three, four centimeters long, and they seal up on the inside and yeah it's just easier um i can reach in now from behind the uh, there's so much wiring the fuel rails in the way uh, i'm going to go back to the bike okay so up in under here um there's so much crazy stuff so you've got all of these all of these hoses um I'm not sure what they're for sensor hoses perhaps um, but yeah, you've got all of the a whole stack of air hoses. You've got all of the, uh, injector connectors. You've got the fuel rail. There's so much stuff in the way. It's crazy. Um, and really you can't actually ever see these nibs. So you can see this one, you can get to that. Damn, that's hot. Um, so you can see this one, but you can't see the others. So the only way you can get to them on a Gen 3, don't know about, well, I've seen the others and it always seems to be really, you know, oh yeah, I can see it, but I just can't get the camera at the right angle. It's like, no, 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 they literally can't see it. Um, so the only way you can get to them is by feel. Um, you're guaranteed to drop it down the bottom. So you need a magnetic pickup tool. Uh, luckily I have one, but unfortunately it drops, it, they're small enough to drop down into spots where you can't even get that down into. So, um, I'd actually recommend it as an upgrade to go and do this. Get some, get some at least four mil rod, maybe four and a half mil rod. Uh, get some four mil tubing, uh, cut off one centimeter length of brass or whatever, and jam it into a chunk of tube and use that to replace them. Because that's going to sit on there just perfectly fine. It's stiff enough. I can, you know, it's not going anywhere. So, um, and yeah, it creates a vacuum seal and it's easy to pull off. So if I need to pull it off now, I can. Um, even the ones I can't see, there's enough in there to reach and there's an, enough in there to hold on to without fumbling it. So yeah, uh, recommended upgrade. But yeah, this Synchro King, um, would I buy it again? It's cheaper than the other ones, but I'd probably go the other ones. They're a bit more, um, how do you put it? Uh, they know what they're doing so to speak i mean these guys i said you know i'm having trouble connecting it to the bike it's not calibrating it's reading uneven all that sort of stuff and he was like oh yeah well you know you've got to calibrate it pull all the hoses off up here to calibrate it and it's like okay but how do you then rule out the effect of the hoses so <laughs> um because you know if the hose has got different flexibility it's going to impede you know, how it bloody, how it measures. So, um, yeah, the fact that they're not aiming at bikes. 
um, but yeah people will see it and go oh yeah this thing's probably pretty good if you don't have a lathe or you're not in a position to go and machine your own adapters to get it down to four millimeter uh, don't buy one um, it's just it's more pain than it's worth anyway bike is back together yeah after having pulled it apart about five times <laughs> Uh, just to fix things. I mean, I even did the usual. Um, uh, oh, there's a, a sensor in there that uh, you have to unscrew in order to get to one of the things. You never see anyone mention that. There's another one. Um, but I got all the way to the end and realized I had a screw left over it. It was like, oh shit. Um, so I had to take the tank off again. I did disconnect. Oh, the hoses. The hoses for the tank underneath, the breather hoses. Best way to get them off is once you've got the tank. You lift okay as soon as you've got the tank unbolted or get some sorry some towel get the towel down over this no need to take this out it's actually i did the first time but there's no need to take this out um, but do get something wrapped over it also do put tape all over here must do things put tape all over your frame because as soon as you unbolt this tank the mounts here are going to slide down and want to scratch your tank. Don't ask me how I know. Um, so that's your second one. Uh, the breather hoses on the inside are easier to pull off by reaching down the back of the tank from the inside while the tank is pulled up. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, but the clips are an absolute nightmare. Um, there is not a single clip on this bike, like hose clamp clip, that just wants to stay put. Uh, that was my next bugbear, was, uh, you know, having to deal with the, the clips, particularly for the breather hoses here. Um, absolute nightmare. They just, you couldn't slide them up. So I'd have to put them on, uh, with put the hoses on while the tank was up, and then I'd have to come around and do it from underneath to get the clips in place. So, <laughs> you know, just, it's the craziness of that. Um, so there's got to be a better way, uh, probably even replace them with hose clamps or something like that. Shit, even zip ties would be better. Um, but the job is done. Um, and yeah, it's not as easy as people say. Uh, definitely definitely re uh, recommend replacing those uh, little vacuum covers with effectively vacuum hoses you make yourself. Uh, the, you know, they'll just do a better job. They'll be easier to get in and yeah probably really the more robust i mean that rubber's pretty soft so not easy to do um no matter what anyone says so yeah i could probably do it real quick now but just the the prep work is an absolute nightmare and making sure you've got everything set up right okay just an addendum on the synchro king here um so Yes, another, uh, there's a number of issues with it. So one, uh, it comes with five millimeter hoses and no adapter hardware, um, which uh, I don't know what their core or what they think the core market is, um, but they don't really specify um, that there's no adapters. But the, the next thing with it is that it comes with, um, and this is modified, but it actually comes with just a pair of large, really crappy alligator clips uh, with the expectation you just clip it on your battery. Um, there's a couple of issues with that. Well, one is shorts. Um, as we know, the battery under here has a, on the, the positive terminal, has a, a cover over it, which uh, loves to flick off anything cl uh, clipped to it. So you're guaranteed to, to end up with a short at some point, and if your your negative lead uh, comes off, you're fucked. Um, but the bigger issue with this is that it has to be calibrated. It calibrates on power up, and it has to be calibrated disconnected, uh, which means this thing needs to be powered up before you connect it. Uh, that's a bit of a problem because you don't really, while you're trying to disassemble and connect and all that sort of stuff. Um, you don't want these alligator clips effectively clipped in under where your tank is. Um, it's a bit of a moronic thing. Now, I've got my power bank, and I kind of knew straight away it was like, no, I didn't want to do that. So I just put in um, a little Molex 2-pin um, going to uh, you know, standard DC jack that I knew my, uh, my power bank would be able to take. 
and yeah i powered it off that um so yeah if you buy one if you if you do decide to to buy one of these um yeah reiterating you need to be able to convert it to four millimeter tubes and um you need to be able to fix the power supply so that you can power it independent of the the bike and not just clip it to a freaking battery um if anything uh even a 12 volt wall watt or something like that um will do the job so but yeah converting it to a, a 2.1 mil jack just meant i could basically plug anything into it maybe one day they'll come out with a bike specific version of it that's got four millimeter hoses or at least adapters but for now yeah stay clear of it unless you're in a position and you know up front that you're going to have to convert the thing before you try and use it